Well, the past few years have been a challenging time as people and businesses negotiate the forces of inflation, supply chain failures and geopolitical risks, as well as bank failures. Against this difficult environment, competition, customer expectations and transaction volumes are all hitting all time highs. Now, Oracle believes that banks have to move quickly in order to keep ahead of the game. And here to discuss that in more detail is Sunny Singh, the executive vice president and general manager of Oracle Financial Services. Sunny, thank you so much for t being here with us. Janelle, Johnny, thank you for having me. It's a delight to be here in, uh, at Cybos 2023. Let's talk about Oracle's footprint in financial services and, and the value that you bring to global customers. Tell us a little bit about that. Sure. So, you know, Oracle is an enterprise technology company and we have a huge presence in cloud infrastructure and data management platforms in business applications. What is less known about us uh, actually is the fact that we have a very broad portfolio of solutions for actual vertical industries. So industries like financial services, telecommunications, energy, retail, etc. In financial services in particular, we have 1400 customers in 160 countries around the globe, uh, you know, servicing on our platforms, uh, more than 10% of the, the bank population in the world. We have 350 customers using our payment applications and 24 out of the 30 systematically important financial institutions are using our applications for um, things like fi you know, finance, treasury, risk, and compliance. And we've been at this for more than 30 years, so we've had a lot of experience uh, helping our customers traverse through various uh, successive technology generations, you know, starting from the mainframes to client server to services-oriented architecture and to the most recent uh, microservices-based uh, cloud native applications. And uh, you know, if keeping with the theme of, uh, of Cybos 2023, which is uh, you know, collaborative finance uh, in a fragmented world, I'll give you a great example. You know, we are bringing together financial institutions with critical partners uh, such as ERP vendors. Uh, we have a great suite of, of uh, ERP called NetSuite and we are working with HSBC in bringing very creative payment capabilities in embedded finance to the customers that are joint customers of NetSuite and HSBC. So these are some of the examples of what we are doing in the world of financial services today. Now, Sonny, it's been an interesting few years, I think it's safe to say. In the last three, we've had a pandemic, interest rates rise, inflation, supply chain failures, geopolitical forces and bank failures as well. Amid all of this, uh, what would you classify as the top challenges that banks are facing today? Yeah, maybe live in interesting times, right? <laughs> so, so um, look, I think uh, just to, to delve deeper into this, uh, we can examine this from the lens of maybe three dimensions, uh, customers, um, you know, operational systems, and the whole regimes that are coming out in risk and finance management. So as far as customers are concerned, I, you know, it's never been easier for a customer to switch banks, right? They can move from one bank to another. Um, what, what, what really is going to happen is more and more banking relationships are going to continue to migrate to financial institutions that are nimble and are able to bring uh, financial services uh, to, to satisfy customers' nascent needs. So if you think about what happened in the pandemic, the number of digital customers grew 3x and the, the number of digital transactions went six times. And while bank systems are really stretched to, to try and keep up with this deluge of, of transactions, frankly, uh, they, they were really stretched thin uh, because of not using their data well, their data was fragmented, they weren't able to drive the, the right type of hyper-personalization and insights that are required. So, so that was one clear outcome, um, which is just this huge volume. And if banks have to keep up with that, you know, th this is gonna cost them an, an arm and a leg. Uh, the second thing that, that, that we saw happen is the impact of you know, these big tech and fintech competitive uh, threats that have come up. These are companies that are born in the cloud. They're born you know, using transformational technologies absolutely natively, and they are creating a huge amount of pressure on banks today uh, to, to try and keep up. And banks are still using systems that were built 
in the 1980s when none of these transformational technologies were even available. The cloud was obviously non-existent back then. So there's a, there's a clear need for modernization. It's a must have, not a nice to have. And the last thing, and you alluded to this yourself, Johnny, it's, uh, you know, we had a very interesting environment uh, recently. We had already, we're coming out of the pandemic. We had seen a, a pretty inflationary environment. We had seen some geopolitical instability. And if you see what happened in the spring, you know, we saw a tremendous escalation of, uh, of uh, interest rates. And that really created a lot of stress in, in balance sheets of banks, particularly tier one banks were probably well prepared for this, but tier two and tier three banks were really challenged. So now we are seeing uh, a lot of effort in, in managing interest rate risk uh, because there's gonna be more regulatory scrutiny around capital adequacy. So these are some of the pressures that have come about as a result of uh, the, the, the events of the last three years. Mm, and so given that pace of change and that unbundling of services, how can banks uh, increase the speed of adoption to technologies that can help them become more competitive? Absolutely, so, so I think the best way to think about this is, you know, the days of running these 10-year transformation programs that banks were used to, uh, those days are behind us mm -hmm. and banks need to progressively modernize and, and the paradigms that you need for progressive modernization are significantly different than what was available to banks. The architectures of today need to be highly componentized. Uh, they need to be driven um, into an environment where uh, they can interoperate with the existing systems. So, you know, you should be able to progressively modernize your technology infrastructure and your application infrastructure because you know, there's a demand for rapid realization of value. So that's one. Uh, in order to compete with the big techs and the fintechs, you need very modern, frictionless customer experiences that can show up on the iPads or the, the mobile phones. And frankly, adoption of technology is quite facilitated by, uh, you know, using cloud, uh, cloud technologies because your suppliers give you a lot of packaged capabilities that you can adopt a lot faster. So the three things you have to think about is modern, componentized, API-driven architectures, modern, responsive user experiences that are frictionless, and as much use of cloud technologies as possible. Let's focus in on cloud technologies for a second. It's been a hot topic for over a decade now. Sure. Are your customers changing their, their, their feelings towards it at the moment, their attitudes? towards the cloud and what advice would you give to corporate banks that are that are looking to take more advantages of, of what the cloud can can give them so johnny i think um what what we saw in the last decade was there was definitely some reticence uh in banks mostly driven by regulatory uh concerns uh, you know things like data residency data privacy data security so there was uh, there was a, a reluctance in wholesale adopting the cloud like some of the other industries had already started to do so. So what we've seen now is that uh, you know, cloud providers are actually delivering better outcomes as far as, uh, you know, as, far as security and privacy and, and some of the residency concerns are, uh, are there. So we are seeing progressive move to the cloud, uh, not only for test dev environments or, or backend business applications, but actual core applications mm -hmm. that are used by banks to run the business. So, you know, we see uh, corporate banks move their GTS, the global transaction services to the bank. We have a number of customers that are starting to, to do that working with us. Um, and uh, we just had uh, one of the largest banks in the US with 12, 000, uh, 12 million uh, consumers actually move to our cloud native SaaS environment to, to satisfy some of their needs. So we are seeing a wholesale move into the cloud. Um, I think the core applications will be the last to go. Uh, you know, less than 10% of banks have gone there yet, but a lot of the other workloads are moving very quickly. And we've seen that happen in large commercial and corporate banks uh, across the globe. Mm. Uh, a great conversation, Sunny, and we sure you're going to be having many more here at Cyboss this week. Thank you so much for your time. Pleasure. It was great joining you guys here. That's Thank you. Sunny Singh, the Executive Vice <coughs> President and General Manager of Oracle Financial Services here.